हेलो एवरी वन वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू दी यूट्यूब लाइव क्लास एंड आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू जस्ट गिव मी अ क्विक नॉट वेरी गुड इवनिंग अरविंद वेरी गुड इवनिंग एंड गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेरी गुड इवनिंग रिजवान वेरी गुड इवनिंग आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल रिजवान अरविंद कैन यू कन्फर्म दिस so this is again uh, this is the next session of the uh, you know fmg exam those who are preparing for fmg exams for those student i am keeping this right thank you rizwan thank you rizwan thank you arvin uh, good evening jasmine good evening so let's start today i have brought uh, the topic discussion important topics which i have chosen along with the mcq so that you can understand how a questions will be asked in your exam right so let's start without wasting any time with the prayer that you all should have a great and grand success in every exams of your life and stay healthy and safe during this pandemic and do not worry about exam you people are going to do good in exam just be confident and stay positive right so good evening pradeep good evening pradeep so this is the first question a surgical incision was made a surgical incision was made over the patient chest and after some time he comes with the shown scar so now you can see these are the scars which are visible so examiner is asking what is likely diagnosis so i'm waiting for those who are going to i i will give you a uh, 30 seconds of the you know time and those who are coming up with the right answer i will be taking out the first correct answer who is giving me the first correct answer i will take out the name of that person right very good so in this question uh i think sabya sachi has given me the first correct answer right so answer is keloid right so this is the keloid you can see this is the external mark probably there was a incision and after incision now the wound has grown beyond the margins right so beyond the incision margins it has grown right so you can see here also here also so this kind of scar is called as keloid right so this kind of scar is called as keloid so this is the keloid and what you should know that what is the most common site for keloid right so what is the most common site for keloid so now you are seeing the most common site so what is the most common site most common site for keloid is sternum right so what should be the right answer is sternum so you can see sternum is the most common site for the keloid right so pradeep sabya sachi and uh, jasmine and pooja has given me the correct answer right hypertrophic scar will be within the boundaries of the original incision whereas keloid will be beyond the boundaries hypertrophic scar will be having a spontaneous remission so a spontaneous remission will be present in case of the hypertrophic scar and keloid will be having recurrent scar right so they will be having recurrence of the scar right what is granulation tissue how you are going to identify granulation tissue granulation tissue will be uh, seen in the ulcers and they will be pink granular in appearance so they will be pink granular ulcers right so this kind of pink granular ulcer will be marker of the healing wound right so that is how we can understand granuloma will be having you know uh, cheesy substances or you know you can see the caseous necrosis or cheesy substances can be present caseous or cheesy appearance on the gross will be visible like this right so it is not any of them so now the correct answer for this question is keloid so let me brief you about the hypertrophic scar as i said hypertrophic scar you can see this is the incision margin you can see this is the incision margin and and the you know wound is within the boundaries of the original wound so scar is within the boundary so these are the scar tissue right these are the scar tissue and scar tissue is not growing beyond the boundaries of the original wound that is very very important this will do not grow beyond the boundaries of the original wound and second important thing they will regress spontaneously right so there will be spontaneous remission in case of hypertrophic scar right so this is about hypertrophic scar now you can see this is the keloid so what is happening in keloid scar tissue will be extending beyond the borders of the original wound right so extension beyond the boundaries of the original wound and it does not usually regress spontaneously most common site as i have said is sternum and remember they are having genetical association also 
so genetic association is also present in this patient right so that is very very important to remember in the killer right now come to the next question uh, look at the image of this female patient and give your diagnosis so now you can see uh, these are the three images which has been given and you have to tell me out of all these which syndrome it can be right so Pooja has given me the first correct answer then Asim, Jasmine Sabbe Sachi all have given me a correct answer. So this is a very simple question which came in previous year FMG exam also, right? If you look at the neck area, right? So usually neck will be up to this, right? So normally neck will be like this. But here we are seeing excessive mass or excessive soft tissue flap. So this is called as webbing of neck, right? So this is webbing of neck we are seeing. And what we are seeing here, this is the low posterior hairline. Right, so low posterior hairline, right, so low hairline is present and you can see broad, right, so broad chest and widely spaced nipple. So when you find these three things, so your diagnosis will be Turner syndrome, right, so answer should be Turner syndrome. So Turner syndrome will be having all these findings, right, so I'll show you again. So you can see this, this is the finding of the Turner syndrome. First, you are noticing there is a webbing of the neck. As you can see, there is an excessive flap of the skin and then there, there is a low posterior hairline. So low posterior hairline, broad chest, right, broad chest and widely spaced nipples, right. So and you can see widely spaced nipples. So these are the three important findings of the Turner syndrome. So this is the point about the Turner syndrome, which is 45x0. Right. So that is the karyotyping of the Turner syndrome, which you should remember. Right. In Turner syndrome, this patient will be having infertility. Right. This patient will be coming with the infertility because these are female patients. So they may come with the amenorrhea. Right. Amenorrhea. Right. So this amenorrhea infertility is associated with associated with a small ovary, which is also called as streak ovaries. So on gross examination, when you are going to see the ovaries, they are very small. They are called as streak ovaries, right? So when you are going to see the microscopic examination of this streak ovaries, you will find there is a ovarian tissue atrophy, right? So there is a ovarian tissue atrophy. So this ovarian tissue atrophy will be microscopic finding. So that is again a very, very important point to remember in the Turner syndrome, right? So that is the point you have to keep in mind. 45 XO, right? So please remember all these points. 45 XO, infertility, amenorrhea because of the small ovaries or atrophic ovaries, which is also called as streak ovaries. That is the gross finding, right? On gross examination, you will see small, small ovaries, right? On when you, but you will take section from the ovary, you are going to see that tissue is having atrophy. So remember, this is a very, very important MCQ, right? Second important thing, when you are going to see uh, the, you see, this is the normally of the hands position will be like this, right? The arm position will be like this. But in case of Turner syndrome, there will be away from the body, that angle will be formed and this is called as cubitus valgus. So there will be a cubitus valgus, right? And then you will see the hand. When you are talking to the patient, you can also observe that there is a short fourth metacarpal, which you can appreciate on the X-ray examination. So here it is a short fourth metacarpal. That is why this finger is equal to the little finger. Short fourth metacarpal was questioned in the DNB exam also, right? So short fourth metacarpal is seen in which disorder? Turner syndrome, right? So cubitus valgus, and short fourth metacarpal, you can see here the bone is smaller, right? So this is the x-ray of the same hand, right? So that is how you are going to, right? So that is how you are going to see the trisome in this, you know, Turner syndrome, right? So that is important point about the Turner syndrome. So now you tell me how whenever examiner is asked, asking you about the karyotyping please remember this word because during exam time many students they get puzzled for karyotyping questions 
right so whenever karyotyping question had been asked make a rule don't jump to the chromosome number 21 don't do like this start from the chromosome number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and you scan quickly right scan quickly where is the defect where is the defect no defect so where is the problem here you are seeing only one x chromosome there is no another pair because chromosomes are all paired here it is no not having any pair so this is the 45 x o that is why it is called as 45 x o turner syndrome this is the karyotypic ideogram so this is called as karyotypic ideogram ideogram is graphical representation of the paired chromosome in a picture like this right so this is the karyotypic ideogram where chromosomes are paired and they are always in decreasing order of the length right so that is the karyotypic ideogram of the turner syndrome which is 45 xo right so now we will see about the uh, trisomy which is called down syndrome right what is down syndrome down syndrome is trisomy 21 right so down syndrome is trisomy 21 right <laughs> down down syndrome this this will be helpful for inict also don't worry down syndrome is trisomy 21 what are the findings you are going to see in the down syndrome can you see that how is the head if you look at the face and you compare the head so you can see the head is a small and if you look at the occiput right occiput will be like this right normally but here it is flat so flat occiput and a small head is present so a small head flat occiput right so a small head flat occiput is present here right <coughs> now in this baby if you observe you can notice that there is a there is a so much thick skin in this area so this is called as nuchal thickness so increased nuchal fold thickness is present in this down syndrome right so small head flat occiput increased nuchal fold thickness and look at this picture this is again a very beautiful diagram where you can see there is a flat nasal bridge this is the flat nasal bridge right and and if you look at the eyes how are the eyes you can see how is the position of the eyes so you can see this is the up slanting palpebral fissures right so this is up slanting palpebral fissures so up slanting palpebral fissures right flat nasal bridge and what you are observing in this eye what you are observing in this eye can you see there are white color spots right so these white color spots are the brush field spots right so brush field spots are small whitish spots arranged in a ring like right so small whitish spots you can see they are arranged in a ring like manner in the eye so brush field spots so now you understood small head flat occiput increased nuchal fold thickness flat nasal bridge up slanting palpebral fissure and brush field spots in spots in the eyes are one of the important features in the down syndrome and down syndrome you will also notice the tongues are coming outside protruding tongue right and when see the child will be having protruding tongue because mouth will be small and tongue will be relatively larger but when they will become uh, you know adolescent or adult age then you will be noticing fissured tongue also right so this is the fissured tongue and simian crease you can see only one uh, you know palmar crease is present single palmar crease is called as simian crease right so single palmar crease is called as simian crease and now if you notice that this little finger is little fingers is tilted towards the other fingers right so this is called clinodactyly inward curved fifth finger so this is called clinodactyly so simian crease clinodactyly all these are findings of the down syndrome right and now you can see that this is the sandal toe gap right so sandal toe gap is present here right so sandal toe gap is a wide gap between first and second toes so now you can see that wide gap between first and second toe is called as sandal toe gap so these are important point right so protruding tongue fissured tongue simian crease single palmar crease clinodactyly is inward curved fifth finger and sandal toe is a increased gap between the fingers you know between the first and second toe toes that is called as sandal toe appearance right and whenever you are going to see again i will say that start from the very beginning whenever examiner is asking karyotyping so now you can see all these chromosomes so all are looking normal all are looking normal all are looking normal suddenly you notice there is a one extra chromosome at the chromosome number 21 right it should be paired na but there is a one extra chromosome so that is trisomy 21 
so that is trisomy 21 so number of total number of chromosome will be 47 right so 47 chromosome so this is trisomy 21 karyotyping right now come to the uh, patau syndrome what is patau syndrome patau syndrome is trisomy 13 right so patau syndrome is trisomy 13 and what are the finding you are going to see in patau syndrome they will have microcephaly can you see the face look at the face and now you look at the look at the head head is little is smaller right so they will have microcephaly right holoprosencephaly means there is no uh, separation of the right and left cerebral hemisphere usually there will be a separation right and left cerebral hemisphere so here there is no right and left cerebral hemisphere which is called as holoprosencephaly whole forebrain is in one part Right? So, there is no right and left cerebral hemisphere. So, this is holoprosencephaly. So, Patau syndrome, trisomy 13, microcephaly, holoprosencephaly and there is a cleft lip. You can see the cleft lip. There will be cleft palate also and eyes will be very small. So, that will be microophthalmia. If you look at the fingers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there are more than 5 fingers. So, this is polydactyly. Right, so microcephaly, holoprosencephaly, cleft lip, cleft palate, microophthalmia, and polydactyly. These are the features of the Patau syndrome, which is trisomy 13. Right, so that is the trisomy 13. So now you can see, now you can see uh, what will be the karyotyping. Again, you start from the first, and you keep seeing on that thing. So you will notice that at the chromosome number 13, you are finding one extra chromosome. Right, so this is the Patau syndrome, which is trisomy 13. Right. Klinefelter syndrome, uh, this is very important because this came in the recently asked FMG exam also, right? So Klinefelter syndrome, you should know some of the important points which examiner will be asking you. Number one, they are, see Turner, Turner was female hypogonadism. Klinefelter is male hypogonadism. So male will be commonly affected. Male will be having, uh, you know, infertility. So they will be basically presenting with the infertility when they will become adult right so what is Klinefelter syndrome so you will see more than two x chromosome two or more than two x chromosome so whenever we are going to see that you will find there are two chromosomes usually there will be one x chromosome one y chromosome but in this case either there will be more than two x chromosome or two x chromosome means it can be two also or it can be more than one y chromosome equal to equal to more than equal to one y chromosome so basically the most common uh, karyotypic ideogram is 47 x x y right so 47 x x y will be there and remember this will be example of meiotic non disjunction during meiosis 1 right so same thing you will see in down syndrome also meiotic non disjunction during meiosis 1 right see the klein filter syndrome they will have mental retardation and there is a saying that for every x extra x chromosome there will be decrease in the 15 unit of the in intelligence quotient so if the, suppose there is a one x chromosome extra so it will be minus 15 right if there are two x chromosome extra so it will be minus 30 so like that iq will be decreasing as per x chromosome increases in the Klinefelter syndrome right so Klinefelter syndrome how they will present male infertility gynecomastia you have to remember this because this was the question in exam gynecomastia will be present testicular atrophy will be there so now you can see that if they have testicular atrophy so what could be the reason what could be the you know a finding so testosterone level will be low so because of the atrophy testosterone level will be low right and fsh estrogen level will be increased so that is the hormonal finding which you must remember which examiners are very much fond of asking in the exam so please remember testosterone is low but fsh and estrogen level will be high and what is the most common cardiovascular finding that will be the mitral valve prolapse syndrome right so these are the important point about the Klinefelter syndromes right now you can see this uh karyotypic ideogram so this is the karyotypic ideogram can you tell me what is the right uh, right diagnosis can you tell me in the comment box sure sure naya dream i will definitely try to include many anemia cases tomorrow today also we have some anemia case don't worry so now can you tell me uh, what is your diagnosis for this
वेरी गुड सो प्रशांत हैज टोल्ड मी क्लाइन फिल्टर सिंड्रोम बिकॉज देयर इज मोर देन वन एक्स क्रोमोसोम राइट सो देर इज वन एक्स्ट्रा एक्स क्रोमोसोम सो दिस विल बी एक्स एक्स वाई सो दिस इज दी फोर्टी सेवन एक्स एक्स वाई सो दिस इज दी क्लाइन फिल्टर सिंड्रोम राइट सो दिस इज दी क्लाइन फिल्टर सिंड्रोम राइट सो दिस इज दी क्लाइन फिल्टर सिंड्रोम विच वी आर सींग इन दिस क्वेश्चन राइट राइट now come to this question uh see uh near dream now you can see the question here right so now you look at this question what is this question a 65 year old given peripheral smear is suffering from which anemia megaloblastic iron sickle cell hereditary spherocytosis tell me what should be right answer very good so first answer was given by prashant and it's very sharp vision that he said that it is a hyper segmented neutrophil one lobe two lobe three lobe four lobe five lobe six and seven so multiple lobes so hyper segmented neutrophil is present right so this is the hyper segmented neutrophil right and if you look at the rbc you can see this is the normal rbc with 1 by 3 of the central pallor right so that is how you have to do in your exam first you have to look for all the five areas you remember 1 2 all the corners 1 2 3 4 4 and the central part of the slide so that is how what i have said yesterday rule of 5 rule of observation and rule of comparison though now you have to observe what you have to observe what is your priority now your priority to observe what is where is the normal rbc so i am showing you this is the normal rbc why i am saying it is a normal rbc because it is having central pallor which is approximately 1 by 3 so after seeing why we should look at this because then only we can compare the rbc is smaller or larger so if you are comparing this rbc with this rbc or this rbc or this rbc or this one so you can notice these are larger rbc and they do not have central pallor also so first of all what i am showing you here is the macro ovalocytosis right so macro ovalocytosis is seen here right so cells are larger macro ovalocytes are present now if you look at this neutrophil if you look at this neutrophil what you are seeing this neutrophil is having more than 5 nuclear lobes right so this will be a hyper segmented neutrophil hyper segmented neutrophil now third point which i want to uh, you know bring your attention for this kind of inclusion within the rbc so what is this inclusion in the rbc this is called as nuclear remnant which is also known as howell jolly bodies howell jolly bodies so howell jolly bodies what are howell jolly's bodies these are the important mcq these are the nuclear remnant right nuclear remnant which is made up of dna right so now you can see in this uh, in this given diagram we are seeing three things 1 2 3 right macro ovalocytes hyper segmented neutrophil howell jolly bodies and that will be called as that will be called as triad of megaloblastic anemia characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia this question came twice in your exam right and it came in the all india exam also so please remember answer should be megaloblastic anemia it is not sickle cell anemia you are not seeing sickle cell these are not sickle cell these are all tear drop rbcs right so these are the tear drop rbcs or pencil cells but they are not the example of the sickle cell right so there is no sickle cell this is not hereditary spherocytosis because you are seeing characteristic triad of the megaloblastic anemia and moreover you can see the age group is also 65 year older older individual is more prone for the uh, megaloblastic anemia because megaloblastic anemia is seen in the old and vegetarian please remember old and completely vegetarian people are more susceptible for the megaloblastic anemia so that is why history will be given like this there was a 60 year old patient who is a vegetarian he is not eating any non veg food so what what kind of diagnosis will be given on the basis of this smear so that time you have to find out these three 
characteristic finding megaloblastic anemia uh, of, uh, of megaloblastic anemia macro ovalocytosis hypersegmented neutrophil and howell jolly bodies howell jolly bodies are nothing but these are the rbcs which is containing nuclear remnant and that signifies the dyserythropoiesis so this is showing you dyserythropoiesis in the bone marrow so dyserythropoiesis of bone marrow is reflected as a howell jolly body in the peripheral smear right now you can see this uh, all whatever i had explained you you can see macro ovalocytosis when you will say macro ovalocyte so now you can see these are all macro ovalocyte so black mark black mark is macro ovalocyte so what is the criteria of macro ovalocyte mcv should be more than 100 femtoliter right mcv should be more than 100 femtoliter hyper segmented neutrophil what is the criteria more than five nuclear lobes should be present in a single neutrophil right how well jolly bodies as i said nuclear dna nuclear remnant or dna so when you find all these three things together you will say that it is a triad of megaloblastic anemia and it is a characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia right see in this there was an option of iron deficiency anemia and there was a question in your exam from this area this was the latest fmg question examiner had asked what treatment you should be giving to this patient right so please remember in iron deficiency anemia these are the four important findings which you are going to see in an iron deficiency patient so what are these findings number one is the chelosis right so number one is chelosis what is chelosis it is a angular stomatitis you can see at the angle there is a there is a crackening and reddening right so these are the fresh fissures at the corners of mouth right so fissures at the corners of mouth will be present in the angular stomatitis who is suffering from the chelosis right second is the glossitis now you can see there is a shiny and a smooth tongue and they're looking very red so red shiny smooth tongue so whenever you find red shiny smooth tongue so that is the glossitis so that is the glossitis right third is the on radiological finding esophageal webs so now you can see that there are constrictions so these are the esophageal webs so multiple esophageal constrictions are present which is suggestive of esophageal web and the fourth important point is coilonychia right this was the question in your exam coilonychia is abnormal thinness with the concavity of the fingernail so now you can see there is abnormally thin and they are concave also right so this concavity is like a spoon shape right so whenever you find a spooning of the uh, you know uh, nail that time you have to think about the iron deficiency anemia and this is called as coilonychia so abnormally thin concave which is giving a spoon like appearance of the fingernail so that is the that is the finding of the iron deficiency anemia and when you are seeing all these findings right that stomatitis glossitis esophageal web coilonychia what is this called as yes this is triad of the plumber winsel syndrome so this mouth finding one esophageal web second coilonychia third this is called as patterson kelly syndrome or plumber winsel syndrome right so this is called as patterson kelly syndrome or plumber winsel syndrome i will just write here patterson kelly syndrome or plumber winson syndrome right so patterson kelly or plumber wilson syndrome this is the name this is the name given to this entire combination right so this one this one and this one so these three things together right chelosis glossitis esophageal web coilonychia all these things together called as plumber winson syndrome or patterson kelly syndrome which is seen in the iron deficiency anemia thank you rohit for such a beautiful picture right a spoon nails that's great coilonychia is a spoon nails right thank you rohit right so now you can see uh, in iron deficiency anemia what are the finding you are going to observe so you will see anisocytosis you can see the size variation will be there so that is called anisocytosis shape variation will be there so that is called as pyoculocytosis so please remember anisocytosis is size variation right 
and pyokilocytosis is the shape variation right shape variation microcytic and hypochromic anemia will be there and other findings are pencil cell teardrop rbcs and target cells so all these are non specific findings so that is how iron deficiency anemia picture will be given in this exam so this is the iron deficiency anemia right now come to the next question what will be the origin of the cells given in the image shown below this was the latest question again first marker yes ferritin will be decreased rohit yes you are correct rohit serum ferritin will be decreased in iron deficiency anemia that is most sensitive also and that is the earliest marker also yes this is a uh, uh, this is the question where you can see a cell is lying here and they have a mirror like nuclei prominent nucleoli so what is this it's a reed sternberg cells of hodgkin's lymphoma and reed sternberg cells are derived from the b cells right so these are the b cells so that is how you have to derive your answer so what is this reed sternberg cells are modified b cells right so these are the b cells right so reed sternberg cells are b cells and that is why b cell marker pax5 will be positive on the hodgkin cell right so that is how uh, you know pax5 will be positive so answer should be the b cell it is not cd4 t cell natural killer cell and cd8 t cells these are activated when they are activated when they are activated in response to epstein barr virus infection remember in response to epstein barr virus infection then these are called as downy cells right these are called as downy cells and epstein barr virus infection when they are infecting this disease is called as infectious mononucleosis this will be called as infectious mononucleosis right so infectious mononucleosis will be having epstein barr virus infection right and that infection will be activating natural killer cell or cd8 cytotoxic cells and they are called as downy cells right so b cells are the reed sternberg cells in response to the epstein barr virus infection so both are different thing right so now it is a uh, reed sternberg cell where you can see prominent nuclei so these are also called as these are also called as owl eye appearance right so now owl eye appearance so answer is a now we will see owl eye appearance what are the differential diagnosis right so now you can see this is the number one owl eye appearance is reed sternberg cells right in reed sternberg cells these are eosinophilic nucleoli right so because of this eosinophilic nucleoli there is a owl eye appearance whereas uh, owl eye appearance second example can be cytomegalovirus right in cytomegalovirus you are going to see the intranuclear viral inclusion intranuclear and how is this viral inclusion is it eosinophilic or basophilic so it will be basophilic intranuclear basophilic viral inclusion viral inclusion so intranuclear basophilic viral inclusions are owl eye appearance that is how you are going to identify right so now this is how you are going to discriminate the owl eye appearance of the reed sternberg cell from the cytomegalovirus right so eosinophilic nucleoli that is in favor of reed sternberg cell and in cytomegalovirus there will be intranuclear basophilic viral inclusions right so it will be seen in cytomegalovirus so that is what we have to remember owl eye appearance two differential diagnosis rs cells and cytomegalovirus what is the differentiating feature eosinophilic nucleoli in the reed sternberg cell and intranuclear basophilic viral inclusion in case of the cytomegalovirus infection right so now you can see and now you tell me what is the which one is the reed sternberg cell and which one is the cytomegalovirus can you tell me after seeing these two pictures Yes, Asim. Even CMB also has the owl eye. That is what we are discussing. So you can see eosinophilic nucleoli. So this is the reed Sternberg cells. And here you can notice there is a basophilic viral inclusion. So this will be the cytomegalovirus infection. Right? 
yes very good number one what i'm showing you is a reduced turnbuck cell number two which i'm showing you cytomegalovirus this was the previous year question so you can again expect some question from this topic right now tell me what should be right answer for this question a 35 year old man present with swelling around the right knee joint x-ray shows so bubble appearance biopsy of the lesion is given below uh, in the microscopy what is your diagnosis so tell me what will be diagnosis of this question No, it's not osteosarcoma it's not evin sarcoma so first answer uh, which i got correct is puja day so puja has given me the first correct answer puja lokesh and now prashant is you know prashant you have modified your answer i have seen it right but that's good you at least you have modified it right so what is the answer here see osteosarcoma will not be having this kind of history right they will be having uh, you know swelling around the right knee joint but the soap bubble appearance will not be there and the age group is also a little bit you know advanced and uh, the biopsy the basic thing is biopsy multinucleated giant cell <coughs> you can see in this biopsy you can notice there are so many multinucleated giant cell there are so many multinucleated giant cells are present so multinucleated giant cells are present in giant cell tumor which is not seen in any of them right so that is how you are going to rule out it's a giant cell tumor right it's a giant cell tumor which was which was the recently asked question in the fmg exam so you may get some question again from this topic mark my words you may get this question again right don't need to say sorry right it's okay we commit mistake even i do mistake right but i don't say sorry right because this is common right we are committing mistake it's okay it's, it's not you know willingly we are not torturing somebody right so we should not say sorry for unnecessary thing right sorry is reserved for the bigger mistakes not for all these things right so here i i will i'll just show you a giant cell tumor first you have to remember it is also called as osteoclastoma because osteoclastic cells are present here remember it's a benign tumor please remember it's a benign tumor but it is a locally aggressive tumor and their most common site will be the femur that is why that 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 question was given around the right knee joint right so most common site will be the femur and in femur also distal part of the femur and they will be involving epiphysis so giant cell tumor is a epiphyseal tumor so distal part of the femur but not metaphysis it is epiphysis metaphysis is for the osteosarcoma right epiphysis is for the giant cell tumor and who will be commonly affected giant cell tumor female will be commonly affected and age group is 20 to 50 years so this patient was also 35 year right now you can see uh, this is the uh, giant cell tumor osteoclastoma and how is this mass if you compare with the surrounding it is the red brown mass and there are so many cystic degeneration red brown mass with cystic degeneration that is the feature of the osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor on gross examination so because of this cystic lesion because of this cystic lesion when you are going to see the x-ray now you can see there are so many cystic areas or opaque area that is giving you so bubble appearance so these are expensile lytic lesion how we will describe expensile lytic lesions and because of this expansion lytic lesion they are giving you a soap bubble appearance on the x-ray examination so red brown mass cystic degeneration right cystic degeneration and and then on uh, radiological examination because these ex masses are expanding and they are having lytic lesion giving the soap bubble appearance that is the giant cell tumor right giant cell tumor when you are going to see the microscopic examination you are going to notice two components that is very very important remember this is very very important point to understand in these two component tumor cells are not multinucleated all these multinucleated cells are all these multinucleated cells are osteoclastic cells and these are non tumor cells please remember this point multinucleated osteoclastic cells or osteoclast type of giant cells are 
नॉन ट्यूमर सेल सो दे आर नॉट ट्यूमर सेल ट्यूमर सेल्स आर यूनिफॉर्म मोनो न्यूक्लियर ओवल सेल विच आर इन द स्ट्रोमा सो दैट इज द पॉइंट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन द जैंड सेल ट्यूमर बायोप्सी वी आर गोइंग टू सी टू कंपोनेंट वन इज द ट्यूमर सेल एंड सेकेंड इज नॉन ट्यूमर सेल हाउ विल बी द ट्यूमर सेल ट्यूमर सेल्स आर यूनिफॉर्म मोनो न्यूक्लियर ओवल सेल राइट एंड नॉन ट्यूमर सेल्स आर द मल्टी न्यूक्लिएटेड ऑस्टियोक्लास्टिक टाइप ऑफ जैंड सेल दैट इज हाउ ऑस्टियोक्लास्टोमा विल बी डायग्नोस्ड राइट नाउ हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू आइडेंटिफाई एविंग सार्कोमा एविंग सार्कोमा नाउ डेज इट इज कॉल्ड एज ई एस एफ टी एविंग सार्कोमा फैमिली ट्यूमर एविंग सार्कोमा फैमिली ट्यूमर बिकॉज इट इज अ मैलिग्नेंट बोन ट्यूमर विच विल बी हैविंग अ प्रिमेटिव राउंड सेल विदाउट डिफ्रेंशिएशन सो रिमेंबर दीज आर द प्रिमेटिव राउंड ट्यूमर सेल वी कैन ऑल्सो कॉल देम एज अ स्मॉल राउंड ब्लू सेल ट्यूमर सेल सो प्रिमेटिव राउंड ब्लू ट्यूमर सेल्स बट देर विल बी नो डिफ्रेंशिएशन विदाउट डिफ्रेंशिएशन सो दैट इज वाई एविंग सार्कोमा एलॉन्ग विथ प्रिमेटिव न्यूरो एक्टोडर्मल ट्यूमर ओरिजिन दे आर कॉल्ड एज एविंग सार्कोमा फैमिली ट्यूमर्स राइट एविंग सार्कोमा फैमिली ट्यूमर्स राइट इन एविंग सार्कोमा ट्यूमर इन एविंग सार्कोमा ट्यूमर वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू सी देर विल बी द मिक टू और सी डी नाइनटी नाइन मार्कर विच वॉज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड एग्जाम आस्क मेनी टाइम राइट दीज आर द स्पेसिफिक मार्कर फॉर द एविंग सार्कोमा एंड ऑन माइक्रोस्कोपिक एग्जामिनेशन एज आई सेट ए स्मॉल राउंड ब्लू सेल ट्यूमर विल बी देर राइट ए स्मॉल राउंड ब्लू सेल ट्यूमर एंड दे विल हैव क्लियर साइटोप्लाजम दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई साइटोप्लाजम इज क्लियर वाई देर इज अ साइटोप्लाजम इज क्लियरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन that is a very important point you will notice in the ewing sarcoma so small round blue cell tumor clear cytoplasm because of the presence of the glycogen and in these things you will notice there are tumor cells arranged around area and that is called as rosette so this is called pseudo rosette because in between there will be some material right so these are called as homer right pseudo rosettes are seen in the in the Ewing sarcoma and that is suggestive of neural differentiation, right? So now, uh, if you uh, look at the Ewing sarcoma, what you have to remember most commonly it is seen in the male who will be a younger male, twenty years less. Most common site is the femur and diaphysis. Now you remember osteoclastoma is epiphysis. Giant cell tumor was epiphysis of the femur, but in case of Ewing sarcoma, it is the femur which is the most common site. right it is the femur diaphysis which is most common site so femur diaphysis is the most common site and what is characteristic of the ewing sarcoma this patient will be coming with the bone tumor which is painful and they will be having systemic illness like a presentation like a fever esr increase anemia and total leukocyte count increase that is the characteristic presentation of the ewing sarcoma and on examination of the uh, you know radiological examination you are going to see onion skin appearance and onion skin appearance is because of periosteal reaction which will be producing layers of reactive bones right so periosteal reaction producing layer of reactive bones that is the reason for uh, you know onion skin appearance and this osteo this uh, ewing sarcoma they will have a characteristic translocation 1122 right characteristic translocation 1122 and this 1122 translocation will be forming chimeric fusion gene called as ews fli1 right so this chimeric fusion gene is going to stimulate abnormal cell proliferation which will lead to the ewing sarcoma tumor right so now you can see that ewing sarcoma you can notice that this arrow is lytic lesion you can see there is a lytic lesion lytic lesion right and this arrow arrow head is showing you the periosteal reaction so this is called as onion peel layers are affected you know, layers of the bones are you know accumulated here so this is called as onion peel appearance so onion peel appearance is periosteal reaction layers of the periosteum is formed and there is a lytic lesion in this bone so that is the gross uh, that is the radiological finding now the gross finding will be corresponding to this now you can see the gross finding how is the tumor mass you can see these are the tumor mass right so this is the tumor mass into the diaphysis which is growing right so it is expanding expanding in the this see this is the medullary cavity this is normal medullary cavity normal medullary cavity is going like this but the tumor mass is this one right so tumor mass is this one which is growing in the bone right so now you can see that cross specimen is showing you tumor mass expanding the medullary cavity with the cortical thickening so you can see there is a cortical thickening because of the tumor accumulation and tumor frequently metastasizes to the cortex with invasion into soft tissue 
and that will be the bad prognostic so when they are going to involve soft tissue that will be a poor prognostic marker of the Ewing sarcoma when you will take the section that will be more interesting because in this center you can see there will be the there will be the some material or neural differentiation and tumor cells are surrounding them in a flower petal like appearance so this is called as pseudo rosette right so Ewing sarcoma will have homer right homer right pseudo rosette will be seen and you can see there is a clearance into the cytoplasm so cytoplasm is clear because of presence of glycogen so glycogen will be present in the Ewing sarcoma and that is why cytoplasm is clear in this case and you can notice there is a flower petal like appearance of the tumor cell so this is called as homer right pseudo rosettes right so these are the homer right pseudo rosettes which we are going to see in the Ewing sarcoma right osteosarcoma what will be the finding osteosarcoma is a malignant mesenchymal tumor and they will be producing bony matrix right and here you will see the bimodal age group distribution younger age group and older both can be affected right most common site will be the distal femur in that it is metaphysis so now you are seeing all these three tumors are metaphysis the uh, distal femur but osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor was epiphyseal right Ewing sarcoma was diaphyseal and now osteosarcoma is metaphyseal right so in this osteosarcoma what are the risk factors so what are the risk factor Paget's disease and radiation these are the risk factors of the osteosarcoma and in this pathogenesis you will see the two important mutation rb gene mutation and p53 so germline mutation rb gene mutation is also associated with the retinoblastoma right same way when examiner will be having hereditary multiple hereditary cancer syndrome breast cancer brain tumor you know thyroid cancer all these things are present together multiple hereditary cancer syndrome will be having p53 mutation and such syndromes are called as lee fraumann syndrome right such syndromes are called as lee fraumann syndrome right again here you are going to see x-ray examination will be showing you a very characteristic finding which is called codman triangle remember it is a characteristic not diagnostic characteristic but non-diagnostic right so codman triangle is what because of the periosteal lifting there is a formation of the codman triangle so triangular shadow codman triangular means tr triangular shadow you can see there is a triangular shadow so triangular shadow is formed between the cortex and raised end of the periosteum so cortex and raised end of the periosteum there is a there is a codman triangle this is called codman triangle and codman triangle is suggestive of aggressive tumor so more aggressive more codman tri triangle will be formed so triangular shadow between the cortex and the raised end of the periosteum is called as codman triangle right and codman triangle is not diagnostic it is only suggestive that these are the tumor which are more going to be aggressive so gross finding you are going to see the tumor mass is like this right so you can see the tumor mass is like this so gross finding will be gritty large tan white and bloody cystic right and when we are going to take the microscopy so microscopy is formation of the new bone right so formation of the new bone by tumor cell right and that is diagnostic finding and how will be the tumor cells are uh, the new newly formed tumor bones are looking like so they are looking like a fine lace like pattern of neoplastic bone so fine lace like pattern you can see fine lace like pattern of neoplastic bone is there so that is diagnostic of the osteosarcoma right now what is what about the osteoid osteoma that was the another option in this question you usually it will be male and that will be younger male that will be 10 to 30 years of the age group and remember osteoid osteoma is the most common true benign tumor of the bone most common true benign tumor of the bone they are smaller in size less than two centimeter and their most common site is the tbl diaphysis right and in this what is characteristic clinical feature see all these things are okay but most characteristic feature of the osteoid osteoma as i said the age group will be the younger age group patient will be presenting with their nocturnal pain so they will be having pain in the bone in during the night time why there is a nocturnal pain because of the prostaglandin e2 alpha synthesis in will be more right and that is why it is relieved by taking aspirin 
so nocturnal pain in the bone and relieved by taking aspirin so that is suggestive of osteoid osteoma right so osteoid osteoma you can see this is how it will be looking like osteoid osteoma this area is the osteoid osteoma right so swelling of the proximal in finger right and this is the area which is the area of nidus right area of the nidus center part of the tumor you can say that right and x-ray is also showing you a nidus and a osteoid osteoma mm -hmm. excessive periosteal bone formation which i will show you in this picture mm -hmm. now you can see this is the osteoid osteoma this is the round radiolucency right and central mineralization is present right and then abundant reactive bones are formed abundant reactive bones are formed that is the osteoid osteoma and microscopic examination you can see again here it is a wavy bone or you can see there is a irregular trabeculae of the bones are formed so irregular trabeculae of the bone but they will be having osteoblastic rimming and they will be having cystic spaces containing these brown color are cystic macrophages cystic macrophages are present in the microscopic examination right so that is how uh, you have to identify this osteoid osteoma in your exam right now uh, the next thing is uh, identify this tumor given in this image this was again a question asked in the recently fmg exam so tell me what should be the right answer for this image very good so that is the um, first correct response by the puja and she has given answer as a retinoblastoma and i am fully convinced with retinoblastoma why because again here we are seeing the rosettes right and this rosette is a true rosette because in true rosette central part will be empty true rosette central part will be empty so that is called as flexner wintersteiner true rosette flexner wintersteiner true rosette so flexner wintersteiner true rosettes are seen in retinoblastoma so that is the important point retinoblastoma flexner wintersteiner true rosettes will be seen so that is how you can i uh, know identify you can notice here how how are the tumor cells so you can see small round blue tumor cells are present around a central area which is clear so that is why it is called as true rosset now you can appreciate central part is clear and a small round blue cell tumors are surrounding them central part is clear and a small round blue cell tumors are surrounding them so this is example of the true rosset which is also called as flexner wintersteiner true rosset seen in the retinoblastoma meningioma will be having no rosset medulloblastoma will be having pseudo rosset and uh, schwannoma will be having again a you know a different kind of thing that is called as veruke bodies right so these are the things which i am going to show you in this image so first of all we should know that what are the rosette rosette can be true and pseudo true rosette central part will be empty so this central part will be empty in the true rosette right so that is the importance in pseudo rosette you will find something is there either it is a blood vessel some other tissue or even the neural tissue all these things can be present in the pseudo rosettes right so what are the example of the pseudo rosette example of the pseudo rosette is the medulloblastoma right medulloblastoma primitive neuroectodermal tumor cells right so medulloblastoma primitive neuroectodermal tumor cells neuroblastoma all these are examples of the pseudo rosettes whereas true rosette where central part will be empty will be seen in the retinoblastoma right so this entry is retinoblastoma and retinoblastoma this name of rosette is called as flexner wintersteiner true rosette flexner wintersteiner true rosette so as i said it is a true rosette right whereas medulloblastoma and neuroblastoma the rosette which we are seeing is called as homer right pseudo rosette right so that is how we are going to identify the homer right pseudo rosette right
so now you can see this is what this is the retinoblastoma so what i am showing you here is the retinoblastoma and what is this it's a true rosset right so what is the name of this true rosset flexner wintersteiner true rosset flexner wintersteiner true rosset right so that is the flexner wintersteiner true rosset of the retinoblastoma now look at this one similar picture right but what is the difference you can notice here what is the difference there is a central part where some schwannomian stroma is present or some tissue is present you can say that but actually what is this these are the schwannomian stroma right so these are the schwannomian stroma right and tumor cells are around them tumor cells are around them so now you can see that what is this it's a pseudo rosette right so what is this it's a pseudo rosette homer right pseudo rosset which is seen in the medulloblastoma and neuroblastoma so this can be seen in the medulloblastoma or neuroblastoma so medulloblastoma or neuroblastoma both will be having homer right pseudo rosets right that will be seen in the medulloblastoma and the neuroblastoma these are the homer right pseudo rosets right now if you look at the meningioma meningioma will be having a you know concentric calcification which are called as samoma bodies samoma bodies and samoma bodies are example of dystrophic calcification right so here it is an example of dystrophic calcification right and what is the uh, name of this tumor as i said meningioma right so this is the meningioma they are arising from the dura mater now you can see that this is the dura mater right and tumor mass is arising from the dura mater so we can say that meningioma origin is the dura mater based tumor right so dura mater based tumor is the meningioma right now the last thing is schwannoma so what i am showing you here this is the picture of schwannoma right what is schwannoma schwannoma is earth cranial nerve tumor and most commonly they are arising from the inferior vestibular branch right so inferior vestibular branch schwannoma will be arising so what will be the microscopy of the schwannoma so they will be having two important finding number one antony a area what is antony a area this is called as palisading so palisading means parallel arrangement of the tumor cell so they are having parallel arrangement to each other that is called as palisading so where you are going to see when you are going to see the hypercellular area so that is called as antony a where cellularity will be more then it will be followed by the area where less cellularity is present right so area where less cellularity is present it is called as antony b or decreased cellularity right and when you are seeing collection of the cells which are parallelly arranged and antony a area in this cellular area that is called as verruque body palisaded bodies are called as verruque bodies so in this diagram also you can see in this diagram also you can see this is the antony a area antony a and this is the hypocellular area which is called as antony b right so that is how antony a antony b area we will identify and then we will see that this collection of the tumor cells this collection of the tumor cells are known as verruque bodies right so verruque bodies are present in which area antony a or antony b so verruque bodies are seen in the antony a so please remember verruque bodies are present in the which area of the brain antony a area of the brain tumor so this is the schwannoma right so that is the point you have to remember earth cranial nerve tumor they also have a you know a, a palisading which is called as verruque bodies which is present in the antony a area because antony b is already hypocellular area cellularity is not there right please see all the you know live lectures which i have taken here in the for fmg or neat pg for your upcoming fmg exam you are going to get many question from here so please do watch all these videos you will be getting many question from here and in the last what i want to say that 
प्लीज स्टे पॉजिटिव डू नॉट गिव अप एट दिस मोमेंट यू हैव प्रिपेयर वेल एंड स्टार्ट रिवाइजिंग दोज थिंग्स विच यू डू नॉट नो कम्प्लीटली और विच आर टफ यू इजिली फॉर गेट डोंट ट्राई टू रीड एनी न्यू थिंग राइट एट दिस मोमेंट बिकॉज ओनली टू टू थ्री डेज आर देयर कीप रिवाइजिंग योर नोट्स ट्रस्ट दैम यू विल एक्सीड ड्यूरिंग एग्जाम स्टे पॉजिटिव थैंक यू